Uh, transmission is an automatic, so I mean, you don't even have to touch them unless you gotta. There's only two gears, all the way down is reverse if you have to. All the way back up is low. There is a high gear, but we cut the high gear off, um, especially for the Californians. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna point out some fruits and stuff growing in Hawaii. A lot of people ask um, like how pineapples and bananas grow. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of native plants while we're up there, yeah? So bananas, this is how it grows first off, starting off. Starts off with a flower. Underneath every leaf is a seeds of bananas. Pineapples. A lot of people think it grows in trees. You know, it, <laughs> it doesn't grow in trees. It grows just like this. You see them? So it takes about a year and a half for a pineapple to be matured and ready to eat. Year and a half, same thing with the bananas, a little over a year. So my gold pineapple, the most sweetest pineapple in the world. Cut them just like this on the side. All right, so you cut around the core like this. You slice. This is the ninth rainiest place in the world. Um, 600 inches a year. We're gonna yell as loud as you can just for a quick second and stop. Just not longer than a second, because if you yell longer than a second, you won't be able to hear the echo, yeah? Okay, one, two, three, go. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you, <get that? laughs> you guys are ready to ride again? Get back yeah. in the ATVs and ride? Yeah. All right, let's go. Not only was it an exhilarating ATV adventure up here, but I also got a nice little spa treatment. They say mud's good for the skin, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you guys, you guys do other tours, right? Yeah, I mean, we do a water slide tour that you guys didn't experience, but uh, really, we do the first tour is uh, just driving like how we just did. And the uh, last two tours is a water slide tour incorporated with the tour. So it's 40 minutes of sliding and the rest is driving. Well, we've done a lot of tours. This yeah. was super cool. I think this is a must do on your Maui checklist. <laughs> For this evening's activity, we board the Terralani for a sunset cruise complete with poo-poos and cocktails and hopefully something that rhymes with cocktails, whales. Get it? The fun starts right when you board. Go guys, go. Go while we're young, come on, let's go. Get on the ladder. Oh. Heads are the bathrooms. Those staircases right there, take your time going down there. Use the railings while you move around down there. You guys, if you see, uh, if you don't think it's operating correctly down there, don't be shy. Please let Amber know, okay? <laughs> what we're gonna do is go out looking for some humpback whales. If we don't see humpback whales today, uh, you, you might be sleeping because they're all over the place. If your eyes are open, you're probably gonna see some whales out there. There's toothed whales and baleen whales. They're gonna be feeding up in Alaska all summer in groups. They like to, they form big bubble nets which capture their prey and then they'll take turns jumping through the nets to engulf the prey. Really, that's a huge Ooh. one. Wow. That's a mom and a baby. Yep. Oh, look at those tail flips. I can tell which was the mom and which was the baby. <laughs> oh my God, this is incredible. <laughs> oh. I love the cocktail cruise, not only for the cocktails and the whales, but also because you get to meet fun people from all over the place. What are your names and where are you guys from? I'm John, this is Dale. 
from Vancouver, Washington. Well, I have some questions for you about Hawaii. Let's sure. test your Hawaii knowledge. First of all, what's the capital of Hawaii? Uh, Honolulu. You are correct. Do you know the name of the state fish? Oh, no. Can't no. pronounce it. It's about this 20, long. 20 letters <laughs> Look, he's going to bring it this long. <laughs> I'm actually bringing it out. I'm giving you a cheat sheet, and I want to hear you guys pronounce oh, it. No, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You can do okay. it. Puma Nu Ku Na Ku Up Pua Ahi. <laughs> Say it really fast, though. Now go fast. No. Come on. You can do it. Puma Puma Nuku Nuku Up who are you? It's pretty close. John, come on, you gotta give it a try. Your wife come did on. it. Come on. Nuku, Nuku, Apo. That's pretty good, actually. Okay. We not only saw whales and had killer poo-poos and cocktails, but these guys do an awesome job. The Terilani's the way to go when you come to Maui to see anything. What do you guys do when you're not, when the whales aren't here? We snorkel. Snorkel. We get in the water. Snorkel. We go snorkeling. Nice. Yeah. And sailing. And well, you, sailing. You guys do a great job. You make everybody feel welcome. Everybody from all over the country is here having a good time. We had a good time. Do we now, can. I need to ask you a favor, though. If I give you these hats, will you wear them? Um, Bud says yes. Bud chose the gray. Always. For you, Bud. I, yeah. Amber? Of will wear them. I will wear them. You will? You promise? Because you, you guys see tourists from all over the place. You need to help us promote next stop. Yeah, but they don't all bring us hats. Nice. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. This is Vivi, it's strawberry guava actually. Wow. And it's uh, one of our big invasive species. This is once, you know, other plants all here and this plant just comes in and takes over. It looks like it takes over. Replaces the whole forest with itself. The ditch was built in 1905, 1906. And the flume was here up until just a few years ago and they, or just last year, and they replaced this. So lava makes waterfalls. What people don't realize is that because we have basalt lava, it is very conducive to making these big staircases in our streams as the water erodes it away. It loosens up the loose stuff and drops it away, gets to the hard stuff, runs down a little ways and falls off. So we'll go right over here in this rock face and I'll show you how the hard and soft is in the lava flow. This is the hard, dense stuff that we're talking about in the rock, but it's old and crumbly. Look at that, that's lava, that's just rock. Okay, we need to give you a, a little tour of your vehicle here. What is this thing called? It goes everywhere. <laughs> I love this thing though. This is what we affectionately call the Pinzi. The real name's Pinsgauer, and it's Austrian made by Steyr Daimler Push for the Swiss military. We put power to every single wheel and uh, get the traction where we need it. So. It's fun to drive, isn't They're it? They're fun to drive, they are. Like, you look like you're having a good time. <laughs> well, I have, more, I have more fun than you guys in the back. <laughs> oh, we're having fun too. <laughs> Eugene River, she's nice and mellow today. We definitely had some adventure on the Big Island today, thanks to Hawaii Forest and Trail. And this man, Rob, you how do you know these mountains so incredibly well? I don't know, I just love it. Love it, do it, live it, read it. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get Lots into of this? studying. I've been into nature since I was a kid. So, and then I came to Hawaii for a job and just as a naturalist, it blew me away. I had no clue. And I've just been in love with the place ever since. Well, tell us about Hawaii Forest and Trail. What are you guys all about? Well, we're, uh, we're about connecting people to Hawaii and Hawaii's nature. And that's basically it. So we got the access. We've made arrangements with landowners to get people through gates and got the vehicles to get them to spots. We've made trails and we just want to bring people to Hawaii Ne, what's the best of Hawaii. And it's a Hawaii a lot of people don't get to see. I love the vehicle. Yeah. That was amazing. But your feet. I gotta ask about these. These are not your average hiking shoes. Yeah, these are Vibram Five Fingers. Once you wear them after a little bit, you're hooked and you just hate wearing shoes after that. I trust. It's like walking barefoot. I 
have a piece of bamboo. It's a Hawaiian wind instrument that I've made. It's called a pu, and it's made out of bamboo. Ohe, this is my pu ohe. I'm gonna blow it four times. When I start my ceremony, I'll start facing east. I wanna acknowledge our life source, Kala, the sun, and uh, I blow it four times to recognize and honor the four directions, just like Native Americans do. These are humpback whales, the ones that are born here in Hawaii. We, that makes them Hawaiian humpbacks. All right, I'm just gonna slow and stop the boat here for now, just for a moment. Dolphins are swimming right over to our boat. We've been at this for so long. Uh, I've been in the water swimming with dolphins for over 20 years, so I know uh, what works well, what the dolphins are comfortable with. The more, first of all, the more comfortable, the more relaxed you are in the water, the more comfortable the dolphin will feel coming around you. So or emulate them, basically. Yeah, yeah. Swim with we, them, which has Yeah, fins. that's why you've got fins on. Use your, when I'm in the water, I use a double leg dolphin kick as opposed to straight leg scissor kick. Or I'll, I'll switch back and forth. Let's go play with some dolphins. People see the dolphin and they're so excited and they pick up on that, uh, the happy vibe that the dolphin give off, you know, and they just want to be with them. It's crazy. We're 3,200 feet above sea level and we're in for a treat, an evening at Kahua Ranch. My name is John Richards, and on behalf of the Richards family, I want to welcome everybody to Kahua Ranch. So how do we run it? Well, we run it under a single principle, and we have for quite some time. That, of course, really started this all many years ago. The term today, unfortunately, of course, has been co-opted and used in a lot of different ways. The term, of course, is sustainability. Now, like I said, it's been used for a million different things, but real simple. What we do today, we want to make sure that we can do tomorrow and on into the future without degrading the value the productivity, and frankly, the beauty of the land. As you look around you, it's a pretty special place. We're doing what we can to keep it that way. We're gonna brand something here, right? That's right. Okay, how, how do we do this? Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna take one of our red hot brands and you're gonna apply it to a cedar shingle. Oh yeah. yeah! So we made the K, but you have a special tree for us that was designed Very just special. for tonight. Just for tonight. It was made by John Richards. It took about 10 hours to make. It was hand carved and, well, would you like to see it? I would love to, man. All this right. is going to be cool. And then, I know. That is very cool. That is cool. Mahalo. <laughs> I have so many questions for you, Raymond. My first question, how does a proper gentleman from England find the Big Island? Well, I originally arrived here in 1957 on a cruise ship out of London and fell in love with this beautiful island after seeing many parts of the world and uh, this island has got everything. All ages come for tonight. Tell us about the night. Well, tonight we have families coming from, as you say, from hotels, resorts, some of our local families. And we have just been able to be able to attract the family people, the children, the, the parents, and the grandparents, the tutus as we call them. 
and it's a wonderful opportunity for them to come and enjoy. They can eat all the food, the steak and potatoes and chicken. And after dinner, you get to dance it off a little bit. Oh, that's right. You've got the line dancing and we get up and kick our heels and uh, absolutely. Then we, of course, we go around and we have the activities. We've got Brandon and uh, we've got the telescope. Make some s'mores, of course, we put more sugar back in. And rope in, of course, John here showed you how to do rope in. We have horseshoes, so a lot of activities for folks to get involved and have fun. It's such a pleasant surprise. Most of our viewers who think of Hawaii do not think of a ranch, mm -hmm. a working ranch. When you come to the island of Hawaii, you gotta check out Kahua Ranch. It is amazing. It uh, gets about 450 inches of rain, the top of there, uh, on average, per year. All right, so if you guys are ready to start the nature walk, start right here. So Chinese timber bamboo, when it's first starting out, grows about six to eight inches a day. Crazy, yeah. And it's actually a member of the grass family. This plant, the taro plant, it actually turns water into mercury. What? <laughs> really cool, right? This is sugarcane. Um, grows about 11 to 20 feet in height, about two inches in diameter. Um, over this way, you can see we have three sluice gates, and those gates are what we're using to control the water levels. Uh, we usually keep the water at about three feet deep on average. Now I'm going to show you guys your mode of transportation for today. Non-motorized mode of transportation will be your flotation device right here, aka your water tube. Now you, this is the safest way that you can sit, okay? Uh, I want you guys to stay like this the whole ride. Um, I'll let you guys know when you guys can kind of reposition. One of the first commands that I want you guys to follow is lights on, lights off. So I want you guys to try it on right now. Uh, make sure that you guys can turn your lights on and off with your gloves on, okay? All right, so you guys can head down there and uh, we got some tubes waiting for you guys, all right? All right. So I grew up in the Black Hills and we had lots of rivers and I tubed a lot, but I've never tubed yeah. in an irrigation dish from our sugar plantation. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's very, very unique. Uh, what happened uh, 150 years ago, uh, they hand dug these irrigation canals that they used to, to water the sugarcane fields. You know, the sugarcane industry is kind of what put Hawaii on the map sure. back in the day. Uh, so what's cool about these, we call them ditches by the way, uh, what's cool about this ditch system is when they got to these big mountains, they couldn't go around them so they would go right through them. So how long is the tubing course? So the actual tubing course, we use two and a half miles of the old Hanama'ulu ditch. And in that two and a half miles, there's five different tunnels. The longest tunnel is actually about three quarters of a mile long. So you know, you're in that one for about 15, 20 minutes. That's a, that's a fun tour. I yeah. love going to the tunnels. You really have no idea what's coming. Exactly. But you do have the headlamps. Yes, so. yes. Which yes. make you look kind of cool, yep. too. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. All right, brother. All right, guys. So aloha and welcome to Keeper Ranch Adventures. My name is Mono. I'm going to be your tour guide for today. Now, um, as for our trails, we do encounter some uh, roots, rocks, ruts, potholes. Now, I tell my guests, smooth and slow every single day. But I have one person from every group who will get to this hill and use way too much brakes, okay? And they kind of do this on the way down. Oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> I'm okay. You're probably gonna have an anxiety attack before you even reach the bottom. So definitely one thing about becoming a passenger. So. Welcome to Keep a Ranch, guys. Welcome to our office. Not a bad place to work every day. Our office here is 4,200 acres and it's owned by the Rice family. Now, if you guys take a look at this pasture right here, uh, right behind me with this mountain in the backdrop, this was used in a really famous movie. Does anyone want to take a guess to what could have been filmed right out here? You got it, Jurassic Park 1. Anybody watch the very first Jurassic Park? All right, so if you guys remember, there's a scene where the scientists and the two kids are running away from a herd of dinosaurs. If you guys take a look out here in the field, that's where most of that was filmed.
I want to first start off by saying thank you for getting me dirty from head to toe. You're very welcome. This isn't the Glad cleanest you. tour, but it's definitely fun. Yep. Uh, pleasure bringing you guys out here to get you guys dirty. So how many people do you guys run through this every day? There's a lot of people in there. Uh, kids too, I noticed. Yeah, uh, every day we'll, we'll take out anywhere from 80 to 90 people. The part of this tour is a lot more than just ATVs, but it's really yeah. learning about the history of the area. Yeah, this, this area here, you know, it's uh, filled with, you know, rich history. So that's one thing I love about my job is being able to share this, you know, with everyone that comes out to visit. So what's next on our adventure? Uh, from here, we're going to actually head up to about a thousand feet in elevation. We're going to take you guys to a real beautiful spot. Uh, this spot here, an estimated 95% of locals that live on the island have never been there or even got to see what this place looks like. So uh, this place we're taking you to next is going to be a real treat. These three beaches, hardest ones to get to on the island. Reason for that, you can't drive or hike in. This beach is surrounded by private property. Now, if you guys take a look to the left, there's a monument there for Mr. John Waterhouse. Now, this monument here uh, was built for him because he was one of the owners of this property. Also, guys, uh, that last ridge line there, that's the southeasternmost point of our, our, our island. If you guys are standing at that point, uh, you face uh, southeast, you're actually going to be right in line with the rest of the Hawaiian Islands. And on a real clear day, you can actually see the island of Oahu from there. So that's one cool thing about that spot. Well, do I look like I had fun? I did. Mahalo to Kipu Ranch Adventures for another outstanding way to see the gorgeous Garden Isle. Mono Vaipuna Waterfall, um, aka Jurassic Falls, which is about 400 feet tall and it is a, a privately owned waterfall and it's owned by the Robinson family. Nice. So how did you guys get the honor of being the only helicopter company that gets to actually land here? Uh, well, we thought of it first. As you can see, everything's pristine. Um, we don't got no rubbish around here. They take care of everything. They clean it up well. and. Um, we would do a really good tour compared to everybody else, I think. You must love your job. I like what I do. Every day is different, I'm guessing. Every day is different. I meet people from all over the world. Where are we going next? We're going to the Waimea Canyon, which is uh, out towards the west side. And then uh, we'll fly around the canyon. Then we'll head out north and go to the Nepali coast. Let's fly away. Headed to the Waimea Canyon, Grand Canyon of the Pacific. It's a little greener than the Grand Canyon, but it really looks a lot like it. I can see why this has been compared to the Grand Canyon. So this is uh, Noa Lolo Aina Valley. Aina meaning the land side. Right there to the right, the first two little beaches you're going to see, there's going to be an archway right there. That's the one that James Bond flew through in the band with the Golden Gun. I'm going to go ahead and say you don't see this every day. Just saying. This is Wailua Falls. Uh, it's a TV show, Fantasy Island Waterfall. Welcome, my friends, to Fantasy Island. So we're heading to the wettest place on the earth. Wild Alley Crater. We're headed there now. So how many inches a year, do they say? Uh, about 450 inches of average rainfall a year. What a special and spiritual experience. Island Helicopters, mahalo. On uh, Keeper Ranch, which is the property, private property. It's pretty much been private for all of the time that there has been land ownership of property on the islands. By us actually running tours, it's what helps them to keep the property without having to sell it off to developers. This is what they make the poi out of. Has anybody heard of poi before? Yeah, Oha is part of Ohana, and that would be what the roots are called, and that's where they developed the name of Ohana because they felt that their family were like the roots of the, of the taro plant. Um, and you need your strong roots and foundation and family to grow.
so I knew we were going to go kayaking. I knew we were going to see a massive waterfall oh, like this yes. one right here. But I didn't know we'd have such an entertaining guide and learn Thank so you. much along the way. So what else does Outfitter School do? Um, we do zip lining. We also have ocean kayaking and a downhill bike tour. Um, everything that's involved with kayaking usually has a hike along with it, just to kind of give a little bit no, more. That was fun. See the interior of the island, see the beauty that we have here. I'm about to touch this water. Oh, yes, you Are you going to do it? Uh, I'm going to be there and be your lifeguard, because a dry lifeguard's a good lifeguard. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> We're in Hawaii Kai Marina heading out to the Pacific to experience one of the most unique water activities you'll find anywhere in the world, but you will find it on Oahu. Are you guys familiar with the Hawaii Five-O show? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, we got some filming grounds right over here. Um, this brown house with uh, shiny windows, it's like an Aspen style looking one. A bunch of um, like famous celebrities like Dog the Bounty Hunter lives on the beach. Um, we got some musicians, uh, things like that. A lot of movie stars. Uh, also in the introduction of Hawaii Five-O, uh, they use this whole bay. They take a helicopter and zoom in and they shoot down. Um, and then if you guys are staying in Waikiki, this is the opposite side of Diamond Head from what you're looking at. All right, everybody. So basically, here's the alien you guys are gonna cruise around on today. We know it's bizarre looking, but it's a really good water toy. You guys are gonna enjoy it. How it works is we have a dive tank here on the front, which we will have in a second. It's not there yet. And that pumps fresh air right into the dome here. So you got fresh air coming in right in front of your face, and all the old air is coming out these holes here on the back. It's really cool. And the only thing you guys got to be responsible for is pulling the trigger and steering around. Done a lot of water sports all around the world, and this is the first time we've ever seen scooters. Where did you find these things? I was on a surf trip about six, seven years ago, and met a guy at the bar actually, and uh, just started chatting. Two years later, he came at me with this proposition and told me that he wanted me to start this over here. We thought it'd be a good fit for Hawaii, and it's it, a great uh, fit for Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, it, it ties the gap between. Uh, snorkeling and scuba, and a lot of people don't want to go through the whole process of getting their, their dive uh, car and all that, and so it's a good fit, and for non-swimmers as well. So Charles, you're 10 years old, not many kids get to go on underwater scooters. Your first time, was it what you expected, and would you do it again? Um, I definitely want to do it again, and it was kind of what I expected, but kind of better than what I expected. Nice. Exciting. More. Good opportunity. High five. Oahu's the gathering place, so I've gathered some of my friends and family, my ohana, for a day of fun. We're going to kick it off at the podium raceway and then we'll splash it up at wet and wild. But first, I got the need for speed with my ohana. This place is Awesome. Thank you. Now, how long has it been here? You brought this from California kind of recently, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, when I came to Hawaii about five years ago, we were looking for a, a venue uh, to do indoor entertainment. Uh, car racing is real big there, so we decided to do, uh, start looking for a building and, and bring it here. What's the process? You got to go over there to the computers, you got to get signed up, get your little card. What you do is just come in and on the kiosk, we have an electronic kiosk, you punch all your information in there, your email address, your Facebook. Walk right up here and put you in a race. So the kids actually get to have their little driver's license. They must love that. Yeah, they love it. They got their picture on it and they keeps all their information on. So once they sign in one time, they don't ever have to do that again. You can come back at any time. If your information's on there. You have two or three races left. Swipe it and then uh, you can race again. So who loves it more, the kids or the adults? Uh, you know what? We run about five adult races for every kid's race. So what does that tell you? Okay, John, that's it, your history. You're gonna be last. Whatever, dude, you're going down. So those hot laps over there. Man, 
that gets your adrenaline pumping. Isn't that awesome? I couldn't catch you guys. <laughs> did you guys have a good time? Yeah. yeah. So did I. Before we go to Wet n Wild, we have a special presentation for you guys. All right. Thank you very much. So here we are at Wet n Wild, but we're obviously not in our Wet n Wild attire. So girls, you got five minutes. You go that way. Guys, we go this way. Meet back here with your swimsuits. All right. Do it. Go. It's a race. Boys win. <laughs> okay, the girls finally arrived. Everybody, before we go out and have some fun, the sun's out, we have to protect our skin. Everybody gets a squirt of sunblock, and then you get to go play. Robert, you first. Go play! I sent my Ahana off to enjoy the water park. There's lots to explore. Eddie, where do we even start at this place? Well, depends. You know, if you have kids, we have many different areas for kids. What's this? This is just a big cruising pool right here? Yeah, right behind us is our um, Hawaiian Waters Wave Pool. It's our man-made wave sort of uh, uh, attraction here at the park. I also saw some people surfing over here. I'm not sure if that's going to be me or not. You know, it takes a lot of good core yeah. um, to get on that board. but. Basically what, what the flow rider is, is a standalone wave um, where you could either body bodyboard or use a skim board which is similar to a snowboard. Oh cool. So if you could snowboard, you could definitely ride that flow rider. This looks like a ride for the real man. So we got Charles, Mike, Johnny, and this John. Tornado time. We had a great day here today. Did we have fun? Yeah! yeah. We highly recommend Podium Raceway and Wet n Wild for your Ohana Day on Oahu. Aloha! Aloha.